What is up guys? Happy 1st of May and we just had the monthly candle close. So in this video, I'm going to look into the charts on the monthly candle closes and compare that to what I said in last month with the monthly prediction. And I'm going to give you my prediction for the month ahead based on this candle close and obviously the, the information that we have now that the month of April is behind us. So grab yourself your favorite beverage and let's dive in. Now, first things first, let's start with the Bitcoin monthly return. So you can see April was basically a neutral month, 2.8%, 2.81% in the green. And yeah, I mean, what can we say? That basically lines up with, you know, we have a green April over here. 2021 was basically similar. 2022 was down. So now we have May and the month of May, we're going to find out very soon. Is this going to be another case of sell in May? and go away, meaning that we could see a bloody May, a red May, as you can see, I mean, historically, um, I'd say it's pretty even, actually, you can see the green versus the red. So that doesn't really give us too much to work with. The only thing that we have is we have a lunar eclipse coming up on May the 5th. And I've been talking about this, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. All I know is we had two lunar eclipses in 2022. And the first one in May, of 2022, we had the collapse with Terra Luna during that eclipse period. And in November of 2022, we had the FTX collapse with that lunar eclipse. So we got this lunar eclipse coming up now. I don't know, last year was a bear market. This year, we have been in a bullish trend, but we have been running up for the last couple of months. And that's something that I'm gonna look at in today's video that, you know, let's see what happens. So basically this doesn't really help us too much. Let's move on to the Bitcoin chart. Right, so we have Bitcoin here trading at $28,600. As you can see, the month did close in the green, like I just said, but barely 2.8% in the green. So slight green candle. We had four green candles in a row here. So since January, February, March, April have all been green. Now the question is going to be what is going to happen in May. Now, let's just look at what I said on the 1st of April, and then I will get into my predictions here. Okay, so back to the charts, basically the levels that I'm watching here, we could get a pullback to 24.5. Even if we get that, that is completely okay for the high time, to higher time frame trend. So as long as we don't get a new monthly close below the 50 again, everything, all those pullbacks are okay to 24.5. So I would like to actually get a quick flush of all the leverage, drop it to 25 or 24.5, then rock it back up, continue higher, hit the 32K liquidity, target, fill the 35k CME gap, and then we'll have to see what happens in May. So that is what I'm thinking now for this month. Okay, so last month I said a pullback to the 50 was possible around 25k. We did not get that. And then the next targets were 32k and 35k. And actually, we got really close to that 32k level, you can see the high was 31,000. So um, to the upside, that was pretty close. That 32,000 level is still an important level. Um, for me personally, because it is just the liquidity level on the high. If we zoom in, I'll show you in a second. Um, basically, it's this level over here. So the question now is going to be what is going to happen. And I think either way, we are going to see some trickery in May. We might not get a full blown like crash or anything like that, but we might get a bit of a scary dip. And again, um, the target for the downside would be that 50 moving average, uh, potentially around 25,000 and maybe even as low as uh, 23,000 is a possibility. I will show you in a second. That's basically the 50 week moving average. As long as the price stays above there, any correction is still fine in my opinion. And the bullish trend on the higher time frame, as long as we're above there is still bullish. To the upside, we could see still between 32,000, which is the liquidity level over here, the previous high and 35,000, which is the CME gap. So. The question is going to be what comes first? Do we get the correction first and then up? Or do we go up first and then do we get the correction? Again, we have a lot of important things that are happening this month. Starting out on Wednesday, we have the FOMC, the interest rate decision. So that could cause some volatility in either direction. And then of course we have the lunar eclipse on Friday and then we have more news uh, throughout the month too. So on the downside, I'd be looking at 25K to be the first support around about here. It's that horizontal level with uh, these tops and the 50 month moving average, but we could wick below it slightly to even like 23K. Um, and as long as we bounce from there, that would still be perfectly fine as long as we close the month above the 50 
moving average. And then to the upside, 32 to 35K. So if we start seeing 32 to 35 first without a pullback to 25, we'd have to start watching on the shorter time frames. Potentially, that could be a sign of becoming more cautious because then we could be followed by a deeper correction. So just changing this to the weekly chart, you can see the 200 week moving average in red, the 50 week moving average in blue. And that is quite simply the indicators I use to determine bullish and bearish on the higher time frame here on the weekly. So as long as we're above the 200 and the 50 here, we're just in super bullish territory. And as long as that is the case, the trend is up. We get a close below the 200 again with the weekly close, then we have to start maybe considering a more bearish scenario. You can see that would be about 25.8. Now, what can happen, of course, is that the price can wick down below that level throughout the week, as long as we don't get a weekly close below it. Okay, so that's something to keep an eye on. And then, of course, the line in the sand for me at this point in time is the 50-week moving average. You can see over here, 22.2K. If we get a weekly close below that, I will probably flip bearish and probably target the lows or maybe even new lows. But as long as we're above there, that's what I said, I think the trend is bullish and whatever happens, I would say see it as a shakeout um, in the short term after such a multi-month uh, bullish run to the upside, we can get a bit of a correction and a shakeout, that would be no problem. Okay, so let's have a quick look at Ethereum. You can see over here $1,848 right now. And while the candle for the month did close, technically slightly bullish, I do not like how this wick is looking because it basically means the bulls pushed it to squeeze above this high, as you can see. It wicked above there and it pulled back down, which indicates that the bulls didn't have the strength to keep it high and maybe the bears are still here in control. So the Ethereum chart looks a little, little bit more bearish to me than the Bitcoin chart. Now, there are cases with a candle like this where it can just continue going uh, higher again the month next to it. But this also sets us up for a potential drop and a pullback here to, I think the first target of support would here be 1460 on the monthly chart. If we go below there with a monthly close, then I would start to again think in a more bearish terms and potentially we see the lows or lower if we get that. Now a retest of that and a bounce from it would be perfectly fine. Again, that would probably be a bullish thing as it would flush all the leverage, it would reset the indicators. And if we get that and then we can continue higher, that would be fantastic. And then upside targets would still be potentially as high as 3,300 if we do get uh, continued bullish momentum uh, this year. Okay, so if we look at the weekly chart over here with Ethereum, the issue that I have is this setup over here, which if we treat this as a range setup, we define the range from the low to the high, whichever side it sweeps first, we get a trade in the opposite direction, meaning that, so we got the sweep of the high here, which means technically because it dropped back into the range, this could be a short targeting the bottom of the range. That would be the textbook rule of this formation. Now, if it's going to end up playing out that way, obviously we will only know in hindsight. But if this was a trade on, for example, a four hour chart or an hourly chart or even a five minute chart, this would be a setup where I would be looking to take a short position, um, obviously on a lower time frame. but basically uh, this would be the setup. And you can see that would basically mean um, the idea was we target the bottom of the range or potentially lower with a stop at the high. Um, if we're wrong, we lose 1%. If we're right, we make, uh, you know, in this case, the setup is 7.5. So hopefully this is not going to end up playing out because that would mean if this ends up playing out that the whole market is going a lot lower. And that is still a potential possibility, of course, but it doesn't always have to be this way. So it's just an idea that is textbook how this range setup would play out. Maybe this time it doesn't. So this, the, the thing of concern here is that it basically, it went above this liquidity here. It took the highs, it ran the stops, and it dropped back into it, into the range. So we get an invalidation here if it continues going higher. And again, that is a possibility. But like I said, we have the month of May ahead of us. We have the lunar eclipse ahead of us. And technically, you know, things have been pushing up for quite a number of months already. So there could be potentially still a sell off coming. And of course, we have had the Shanghai event, which now allows uh, staked Ethereum to become withdrawable. So there is more supply available to be sold. I don't know what lies in the cards. I'm just reading the chart um, as I see it and as I interpret it. So 
Again, like I said, on the monthly chart, as long as we don't drop below about 1460, and you can see that coincides with the 50 week moving average and the middle of this range, about 1460. If we drop back there and we bounce and that holds, then I would still see that as, you know, just a healthy correction within a bullish trend and hopefully we continue higher after that. If it gets below there and we get a new weekly close um, below the 50 week moving average, so in this case actually it's 1520, if we get a new weekly close below there, we have to consider the possibility that um, that could be a local top right now and we could still continue lower. Okay, so we have to stay flexible. Um, right now, I'm still leaning towards just a correction and then continuation to the upside, but if the chart shows us otherwise, we're going to have to listen to what the chart is saying and basically adapt to that. So Bitcoin kind of 50-50, it could go both ways. Ethereum looks more bearish to me than the Bitcoin chart. We do have the month of May. So I am leaning towards some sort of shakeout at least to the downside, potentially worse. Um, so let's see what ends up happening. Hopefully it's going to be just that pullback and then a continuation to the upside um, for the rest of the year. But we take it a week at a time, we take it a month at a time subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so if you want daily updates from me i do that inside my vip discord if you're not yet a member click the link in the description down below join us you get daily insights from me charts setups um answer your questions and of course you get access to my trading course you get access to a whole lot more so all the details are in the link in the description down below if you want that guidance come and sign up there's 60 days uh, refund period so there's there's no risk to you come and learn come and join if you're not happy with it, you can get your money back. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.